Hi, we bring you this video in the wake of investigation that Nikola Corporation has come under. We will not look at any financial discrepancies. Our focus will be only on the technology Nikola was claiming to use. Is the fuel cell technology ready for the long haul? We will find out. By the way, I've started a new channel called Electric Aviation. These are interesting times where hundreds of electric aircrafts are being developed. So if you would like to know about these new sustainable and state-of-the-art flying machines, then please do check out that channel. The link is in the description. Now before we begin, I should inform you that in order to benefit from this video, we have to set aside the fuel cell versus battery debate. We also have to set aside the current economics of fuel cells, its efficiency and cost of hydrogen. It is understood that currently fuel cells don't make economical sense, but we will touch on the topic to see where the technology was and where it is heading. So without further ado, let's begin. Fuel cell is an interesting piece of kit that has been around for a long time. We tend to forget that it is the technology that helped us in going to the moon more than 50 years ago. Since then, we have made great progress and shrunk them to a level where we can get 6 kilowatt per liters of volumetric power density and 4 kilowatt per kilogram of gravimetric power density, excluding the hydrogen storage. This is an order of magnitude higher than batteries. We have made cars that run on fuel cells, bikes, aircraft, train, and even submarines. So it is an established technology that can meet our required performance at almost every scale in the transportation sector. But why hasn't the technology caught on like batteries? The biggest reason is the cost. It is very costly to produce a fuel cell and it is very costly to run it. To give you an idea, just look at the Mirai, which is a fuel cell car under production by Toyota. It is priced at $59,000 in the US and reportedly makes a loss of about $50,000 to Toyota on each car sale. Thus, the true cost of the Mirai is around $109,000 US dollars. Now, one might see this as a very high price for a sedan, but compare it to the 2008 Honda Clarity, which was one of the first fuel cell cars in the market. At the time of its launch, it cost around a million US dollars per unit. So the price has come down significantly, nearly tenfold in a decade. One reason for this is the increase in the production volume. As of December 2019, global sales of the Toyota Mirai totaled 10,250. Toyota expects the price of the fuel cell cars to match those of hybrids within 10 years. The cost of producing fuel cell cars will indeed come down as the volumes increase. According to research, fuel cell costs are dropping to half the value every six years. But will the cost of filling up also come down? Bear in mind that the price of hydrogen is up to $15 per kilogram. And that is the price of dirty hydrogen, that is the majority of which is generated by fossil fuels through a process called gas reforming. Well, experts have claimed that if progress continues in developing hydrogen infrastructure, then it is possible that even green hydrogen could reach cost parity with diesel by 2030. One way this can happen is by generating hydrogen from the excess electricity produced by renewables that we currently dump. And as the share of renewables powering our grid increases, so will the excess electricity. There are quite a few reasons why hydrogen-based transport might become a reality. First, it allows the oil companies to keep selling us fuel, which is in their interest, and the research to produce hydrogen in the most efficient way is being hotly pursued. The second reason is something that most of us tend to overlook. Hydrogen could be easily used in an internal combustion engine, so you can burn hydrogen directly in an IC engine and convert a car to a zero emissions car just by replacing the normal fuel line with a hydrogen supply and a bit of tuning. One has to remember that by the year 2035, diesel engines will be banned by many countries. So perhaps an easier route to green transportation is by developing a green hydrogen infrastructure, which is being pursued by many oil companies. Furthermore, hydrogen has an advantage of low fueling time. The degradation of PEM fuel cell is very low over the life of the vehicle. And finally, the infrastructure for hydrogen could be easily developed compared to upgrading the whole electric grid. So there are good reasons why many automotive companies are not hedging their bets only on battery electric vehicles. In fact, some of these established companies like Toyota, Honda and Hyundai 
are heavily investing in fuel cells to benefit from the windfall of early adopters in the hydrogen-based mobility sector. Also, the current weight of the batteries prohibit them from being used in the top-end truck market that is, in the Class 7 and Class 8 category trucks. Fuel cells, therefore, are the only technology in the heavy vehicle market with an electric drivetrain. And caching this opportunity was what Nikola Corporation based their strategy on. Let's have a look at the heavy-duty fuel cell trucks in the market. We have the Axion by Hyundai that is already coming out of the production line. 20 units have been produced so far, 50 units will be produced by the end of 2020, and by the end of 2025, 1600 Axion heavy duty trucks will be hauling goods across the world. These are 250 horsepower trucks or 190 kilowatts. Next we have the Mercedes-Benz Gen H2 truck with a peak power of 442 horsepower. At the moment, it is still a concept vehicle that will enter production in 2025. Then there is the Toyota Project Portal, proof of concept trucks. These are 670 horsepower category 8 trucks. They already have 10,000 miles of operation under their belt from road testing. The success of these led Hino to partner with Toyota to produce 8 fuel cell electric trucks. The first of these trucks will be rolled out in early 2021. This brings us to Nikola. The company announced way back in 2016 that it will be launching a Category 8 1000 horsepower electric truck that would enter production in 2020. As of November 2020, we haven't seen any Nikola vehicles coming off the production line, so it's safe to say that Toyota has already taken the crown in this category. It should be noted that Toyota, Mercedes and Hyundai all had fully functioning fuel cell technology at their disposal. In fact, all three of them have produced the truck fuel cells by simply joining up the two fuel cell stacks that they use in their sedan or SUV. The Hyundai truck uses two of its iX35 fuel cells, Mercedes uses two of its GLC fuel cells, and the Toyota uses two of its Mirai fuel cells in their truck. The specs for fuel cell that was to be developed by Nikola are yet to be seen. Fuel cells cannot work on their own. After startup, it takes a while for the fuel cell to get going and produce electricity at its full capacity. Therefore, every fuel cell vehicle has a reasonable size battery pack to act as an energy buffer. The Axiant has a 73.2 kilowatt hour battery pack. The Mercedes Gen H2 also has a 70 kilowatt hour battery pack. Nikola announced that it will have a battery pack with a whopping 320 kilowatt hour capacity on Nikola 1. So far for the prototype, the news has been that the battery pack was outsourced. Now, outsourcing itself isn't the issue here. It is the tall claim of developing in-house a breakthrough battery with double the energy density and just 40% of the weight that doesn't align with outsourcing. The integration of fuel cells and battery cells to make them work in tandem in itself requires a lot of research and development. Fuel cells are much more complex compared to battery electric vehicles. Nikola certainly has ventured into uncharted territory. To attempt a 1000 horsepower fuel cell with a 320 kilowatt hour battery pack with no legacy experience of both these products was a bold step indeed. Nikola's partnership with GM will certainly help its cause. Both Toyota and Hyundai, with millions of cars produced between them, have deep enough pockets to absorb current losses in betting for future profits. They already are producing fuel cell vehicles in large numbers to cut short the losses. Nikola does not have those volumes. So I leave it to you to make your mind if Nikola will meet the challenge it has set for itself. And with this, the video is concluded. If you learned something from this video, do give it a thumbs up. Thank you for your attention.